A huge warm welcome to the Art Vlog Art Lovers with me, George Dopamine. Today I want to take you inside the Tate Modern's big show of the spring and summer 2024, and it focuses on the avant-garde artist Yoko Ono. Yoko Ono is obviously very well known, but often, sadly, in public perception as the wife of John Lennon, but she deserves so much more recognition than that. Um, she was one of the really important avant-garde artists in New York in the 1960s um, and has continued to produce art throughout the next decades. I see this as a bit of a trilogy along with um, the Carolee Steeman show at the Barbican last year and then Marina Abramovich who's just finished a, an epic show at the um, at the Royal Academy and I have similar questions for this exhibition. How is the Tate going to show an artist who produced many performance works where her presence was essential like cut piece um, and how is it going to encapsulate a very very wide career. I'm excited for this one. The show's on all the way until the 1st of September. That is a massive run and um, it's £22 to get in so come and join me as we head inside. The exhibition spills out of um, the main galleries. You can see here Wish Trees for London, where members of the public uh, um, offered the chance to attach a, a wish for peace to one of these trees. Um, and this is even before you get into the pay bit of the exhibition. And the exhibition itself runs chronologically um, from uh, from Ono's early artistic practice through to the present day. Um, I've chosen actually to pick out a few highlights thematically. Um, obviously, Ono was a conceptual artist but she was a uh, worked in so many different mediums and different themes that I thought it'd be quite interesting to have a look at it that way but obviously when you come you'll be able to explore the chronological narrative and explore how um, the Ono's art changed if you are able to come um, and if not I hope this gives you a sense of some of her work and sort of her as an artist as well. But let's first of all remind ourselves a little bit about Yoko Ono, because Ono was born in 1933 in Tokyo and grew up in Tokyo, living through World War II, which included the terrifying firebombing of the city. She claims it was this experience which led to her feeling an outsider. She relocated to live with her family in New York in 1952, and by the late 50s, she married her first husband, um, Toshi Ichiyunaji, and became involved in the Flux Fluxus Group, founded by George McCunis, as an avant-garde coalition of designers, artists, and musicians, including many from Japan. By the early 1960s, Ono was immersed in the New York avant-garde art scene. She rented a loft apartment at 112 Chambers Street and organised a series of events here. These photos show the events that took place. Legendary names such as John Cage and Pevy Guggenheim um, were involved and saw Re Ono realise instructions such as painting to be stepped on. During 1962, Ono travelled to Tokyo and stayed there for two years. She presented her own work and also toured with John Cage and David Tudor. She married her second husband, um, Anthony Cox, in 1962. Ono met John Lennon on November the 7th, 1966, at the Indica Gallery in London. Ceiling painting was on show, and apparently John Lennon was interested by this painting um, and its more positive message. As you can see here, it's recreated in the exhibition. They got married, and although they had a period of separation, they became creative partners until Jen D Lennon's death on the 8th of December 1980 outside the Dakota building in New York. With that death in mind, one of the most powerful works in the exhibition comes towards the end, a hole, um, with just one bullet hole shattering a piece of plain glass. And Ono encourages us to go round to the other side and look through the hole. Um, and this is obviously in some ways a reference back um, to that terrible evening. In the wake of Lennon's death, Ono continued producing art and music um, as she still does as I record this to this day. One of the seminal motifs of um, Ono's work are in her instructions and in 1962 at the Sujetsu Art Centre in Tokyo Ono exhibited more than 30 instructions for paintings but the crucial thing was the words were presented without accompanying canvases. 
and the exhibition explains it marked a decisive conceptual shift in both Ono's practice and the history of ideas-based art. Paint was replaced by language. We, the viewer, completed the artwork, either physically or simply in our mind. Ideas took primacy over the object for the first time, and a recurring motif throughout the show is the realisation of some of those works, as you can see here. One thing that really excited me about the works in relation to today is that with the advent of AI, it's become increasingly clear that the quality of instructions and prompts are paramount in making the best use of AI. And so whereas Ono was providing instructions for other humans or for herself and other artists, um, these really relate to our current world where highly skilled is going to mean the person who can write the best prompts to get the best out of AI programs. Now, Ona herself realised many of these works, but the great thing is that these instructions can be interpreted in many different ways. Here's one interpretation, for example, of painting and until it becomes marble. Um, I really enjoyed um, painting to be stepped on, which is coming up now. It's probably the first interactive piece of the exhibition. And um, obviously it's there to be it's there to be uh, engaged with and um, to challenge the way that we treat um, these works of art. There's my there's my feet on it. And there's a lovely set of photographs accompanying um, some of these, which um, show some of the works that were originally just conceived as in instructions being uh, realised. In 1964, Ono published Grapefruit, which included more than 200 instructions divided into five sections, music, painting, events, poetry and object. She used grapefruit as a metaphor, as both a favourite fruit and because to her it represented East and West, the two cultures in my life. Uh, I found it really interesting that she announced both the birth of her daughter Kyoko and Grapefruit at the same time. And these instructions, as you can see here, like go right down one gallery wall. And when you actually read them, you get a real sense of, of the playfulness of um, Yoko Ono's creative vision. Um, Ono performed many of these conceptual works from Grapefruit across the US and Japan, collaborating with artists and musicians um, across the world. Painting to shake hands, painting for cowards is, is an example of the simplicity of both the instructions and the realisation. Um, it's hung later in the gallery after the Grapefruit section and um, it contains a lot of Yoko Ono's trademark humour. White Chess Set from 1966 um, it, it also encapsulates this concept by remaking a chess set in all white. She's changing the rules of the game. And as Ono said of this piece, the result is fun and laughter, not serious at all. And that's that's how life is, you know. And I think that quote is kind of like sums up a lot of the lightness and joy of Ono's work. Another one of, of her conceptual works that struck me was Morning Peace. Morning Peace saw Ono sell shards of broken milk bottles first in Tokyo, each labelled with a date um, and time of a future morning. She repeated the performance the next year, year, year in New York, as you can see here, selling pieces of sea-worn glass with future mornings from the rooftop of her New York apartment building. Obviously, these pieces are, are worthless. They're just scraps of glass, and you can see them here. And she says it's a useless act, but by actively inserting such a useless act into everyday life, perhaps I can delay culture. Draw Circle event saw Ono send out postcards with the simple instruction, Draw Circle. A selection of responses were delivered to Ono, including by famous artists such as Carolee Schneemann. And it shows how Ono was a master of marketing as well as conceptual art. A box of smile encourages the viewer to open the box and smile back at their reflection. A key part of Ono's conceptual art was her performance art and cut piece is one of her seminal works. 
As you can see here, she kneels motionless and graceful on stage, while audience members cut away pieces of clothing with a pair of scissors. Over the length of the film, they get increasingly aggressive. Ono says it was a kind of criticism against artists who were always giving what they want to give. I wanted people to take whatever they wanted. Ono performed this piece several times, including in 2003 in Paris. It was conceived in 1964, and this filming took place in 1965, nearly a decade before Marina Abramovich took things further with the now notorious Rhythm Zero in 1974. This was also a highly charged work where she also issued instructions that, quote, there are 72 objects on the table that can... Um, that can be used on me as desired. Um, this this kind of work cut piece shows how far ahead of her time in terms of challenging artistic boundaries Ono was compared to many of her contemporaries. Um, in in um, 1964, Ono held a farewell show um, at the Sogetsu uh, Art Gallery in Tokyo, which included strip tees for three. And um, it, what was really interesting with this was that it was not a traditional script to strip tease, but the script, which you can see here for the show, um, was was meticulously written and um, is a really important part of 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 documenting how Ono created her performance pieces. Performance work continued to be seminal to um, Ono's practice and at the end of the show we see this piece from the Sydney Opera House. <laughs> Having grown up and come of age in the horrors of the Second World War in Tokyo, um, Ono was a consistent activist and campaigner for peace. And it was it's impossible to separate her art from this mission in lots of ways. We get to see um, bed piece where John Lennon and Yoko Ono frolic and ask serious questions from journalists about um, about about world peace in Amsterdam and Montreal. But we also get to see maybe lesser known works like Acorn Event and Acorn Peace, where um, John Lennon and Yoko Ono planted acorns in Coventry Cathedral, uh, one facing east, one facing west, to symbolise world unity. And they also sent um, acorns to 96 world leaders, asking each recipient to plant their own acorn for peace. And we see a selection of letters from um, from these world leaders as part of the exhibition and one thing that you really will want to immerse yourself in in the exhibition is the documentary evidence in this section for example um, there is multiple documentary pieces on how uh, john lennon and, and, and um, yoko ono uh, campaigned for peace against the vietnam war and how their actions were reported in various newspapers as well a crucial part of Ono's artistic output was obviously as a musician. She was in the Plastic Ono band with John Lennon and continued to perform after Lennon's death. And there's a really nice little alcove in the exhibition where you can sit down with headphones on and immerse yourself in um, Yoko Ono's music. Um, it doesn't forget that, even though that's much harder to express. Right from the start of the exhibition, we are shown Ono as a video and sound artist. I Blink is a two minute 40 second piece from Flux Film, while Telephone Piece rings out above you as you enter the main part of the exhibition. After telephone piece ringing up above your head, we see film number one, Match, which sees photographer Peter Moore capture the striking of a match using a high-speed camera before it's played back at a standard rate, so that the action unfolds in slow motion, forcing us to slow down as well. And if you go to the exhibition, you'll kind of be transfixed by the, the light, and it kind of leads you to ponder all different kinds of questions about the um about the meaning of of this work and the show is really well served by 
by still photos as well of Ono performing different pieces. Bottoms, strings together, footage of around 200 buttocks over an hour, a 19 minute piece. Participants included artists, writers, sculptures, and there's audio attached. Um, for, for Yoko Ono, this represented the London scene today. One of the longest films is a claustrophobic 25 minute piece called Fly, um, which is shown in its own viewing room towards the end of the exhibition. Um, from the like, mid-60s, Yoko Ono began to use ready-mades to express her conceptual art. You could buy the apple in this piece, for example, for £200 and, quote, experience the excitement of watching the apple decay. According to the exhibition, John Lennon visited it and, and took a bite out of the apple, which was not one of the intentions. Air bottles from 1967 contained tablets such as half a door or half a cupboard. Another seminal conceptual piece by Ono, Yon Ono was called Half a Room, which was presented at the 1967 show Half a Wind at the Listen Gallery. Ono said that molecules are always on the verge of half disappearing and half emerging. Somebody said I should put half a person in the show, but we are halves already. In Helmets, Pieces of a Sky, we are invited to take a piece of the sky which is in the form of a puzzle. The pieces are presented in German army helmets from the Second World War, referencing the violent fragmenting of hope through war. Despite being dispersed, the puzzle pieces are still designed to come together and reform the sky. Ono oh always had one eye on audience participation. I became, um, shall we say, exhibitionistic, you know, at this point. That they're very used to this kind of situation. They come, they participate, they exhibit. You know. It is one of the most interactive shows that I've been to, starting with Wish Trees for London in the in the foyer before you get into the exhibition where you can pin your wish to the tree for peace. Um, bag Peace is a really interesting one. You can see the black cloaks behind and audience members, viewers in the art gallery are encouraged to get into the black cloaks and, um, and perform on stage entering this black bag as John Lennon and Yoko Ono did to produce um, fluid sculptures. I'd love to hear in the comments if any of you performed as, as part of Bag Piece. I didn't this time, but I certainly will be going back and, and throwing some shapes. Um, you know, the instructions said that this, that, that, that this might include moving around, taking your clothes off, or e it within the bag, obviously, or even um, sharing a nap. I saw a very vigorous person perform, as you've just seen, and there's also documentary evidence of the um, of of the original performances. Shadow piece encourages us to trace each other's shadows until we all become one um, within the within the piece. Whereas another instruction, which is to just simply hammer a nail into a canvas or wood or metal, is something that you can you can take part in. And as I said earlier, you're very welcome to sit down and play a game of white chess. The biggest participatory piece, Ad Colour Refugee Boat, boat um, began as an all-white boat in an all-white room. And Ono's instruction was simply just blue like the ocean. And we were invited to contribute our hopes and beliefs in blue and white with a series of pens on the wall. Ono conceived this work after being moved by international press coverage of the hundreds of thousands of refugees risking their lives to travel to Europe by sea. And the work invites us to reflect on the urgent and ongoing refugee crisis. The final work, My Mummy is Beautiful, invites us to write our thoughts of our mother and pin them to a canvas. And as you can see, bearing in mind I went on the very first opening day, many people had participated in this already. And um, there was some really moving, as well as quite humorous in some cases, um, tributes to, to mothers everywhere. And we end the show with this piece. And as we go into the shop, the work spills out the other end of the gallery as well.
Well, I hope that that um, exploration of Yoko Ono's Music of the Mind gave you a sense about whether this is a show for you and whether you would like to come to Tate Modern in London to view this show. Um, if you do come, I would advise you to give uh, about uh, two or three hours, about half a day, really, to explore the show because there's so much. It's a massive show with a density of, of documentation and the video works and also the chance to, to um, participate yourself in some of the art. Um, this video means that it's a show you can't really rush and that's added to the fact that our, that Ono is an artist who likes often to slow things down and to to make us think and stop for a second lots of her art is about that so it means you need to go through at Ono's pace in a way um, my first big thought really was, did this show um, recapture Ono the artist and remind her what a seminal and influential artist she was, as opposed to just being the wife of an ex-Beatle? And the answer is an absolute yes. By taking a really thoughtful chronological approach, and I thought the show was really well curated, you get to see how Ono's art developed, how she interacted with some of the most important artists and musicians of the age and... and um, and still is, and, um, and and was able to produce some really intriguing works. Um, so I thought the curation was spot on. I didn't show it chronologically, as I said, because I want you to be able to explore that if you're able to come and visit. Instead, I picked out some thematic highlights. Um, it's really interesting because in my introduction down on the beach on the River Thames, I kind of said that this is a part in my mind of an un unintended trilogy with two other titans of kind of avant-garde, edgy performance, uh, multimedia, mixed media works, Carolee Schneeman and Marina Abramovich. And what struck me straight away about Ono was the lightness of her work. At its best, it's delightfully playful. It kind of frolics in a way and it gets you, it, it, it sort of takes you away from the heaviness of the world even when she's dealing with very heavy themes like her peace pieces responding to the Vietnam War um, so so generally there was there was a lovely lightness which means that lots of this work floats above the atmosphere in a way now that does mean that sometimes it can lose its meaning and just appear a bit silly and I thought I'd re read this quote from Ono which kind of sums that up a little bit she said um of one work of, of the morning pieces it's a useless act but by actually inserting such a useless act into everyday life perhaps I can delay culture and so some of you will find the work a bit too whimsical in places but at its best it straddles that 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 line between real life and imagination really successfully and at its best it can be powerful that's not to say pieces like cut piece um, are not you know really really moving and highly charged but there is a, a lovely lightness to this work overall which can be pleasing which can be fun which can be enjoyable but sometimes can tip over the edge to become a bit superficial but overall I'm going to give this show drum roll an 8.5 out of 10 not just for the art because on the art vlog I'm not so much an art critic as somebody who reviews exhibitions and reviews how well they're put together and whether they um, show the artist in in a powerful way and that really does do this for Yoko Ono if you're interested in, in her as an artist or in the 1960s, 70s, 80s, avant-garde and onwards, obviously, into the 2000s and to this day, then it's a must-see. There are a couple of what I consider to be really important works, like the Men piece, which was re recently restaged at Whitechapel, which were only given a cursory glance. But overall, it's a really rich show, which I do recommend. Um, Yoko Ono, Music of the Mind, is on until the 1st of September. It's a very long run. I thought that was going to be too long, but having visited it, I can see why it's been given that long, because people will want to return, take members especially, I imagine. And the interactive nature of a lot of the works means that this will become a word of mouth must go to i think that 22 pounds is good value for the um cultural experience you will get because i wanted to end by saying this as well as an exposition of uh, yono's art even if you don't like that it's a wonderful cultural history of this period through ono's eyes so you can almost get it on on, on two different levels Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to put in the comments if you visited what you think about this. And most of all, um, do subscribe to the art vlog. Hit that notification bell for ongoing reviews from the London art scene, sometimes venturing out beyond London as well.